The death toll mounted today in the streets of Beirut as the civil war in Lebanon continues. Muslim against Christian, Muslim against Muslim, Christian and Muslim against Palestinian. Israel's bombardment of Beirut escalated this morning. Its firepower is aimed at crushing the PLO, but shells and rockets cannot distinguish between terrorists and civilians. Everybody wants a peaceful environment. Everybody wants to restore the stability to this uh, beautiful country. So no, we do not feel threatened. At least 200 U.S. Marines are dead, killed when a suicide bomber drove a truck loaded with explosives into their barracks here today. The Marines, sent here as a neutral peacekeeping force, have now become the enemy. We're not going to let a bunch of insidious terrorists, cowards, shape the foreign policy of the United States. Dozens of civilians were killed today in a car bomb attack aimed at the Hezbollah spiritual leader, Sheikh Fadlallah. No one has claimed responsibility, but the radical Islamic population here in Beirut is pointing the finger at the CIA and America. There's no doubt now that Americans here are being targeted. The latest kidnap victim, journalist Terry Anderson, one of the few Westerners left in the city. He has now disappeared into the black hole of Muslim West Beirut. This is what Beirut has become, a terrifying cocktail of anarchy and bloodshed, where the streets belong to gunmen and violence is a way of life. University professor Thomas Sutherland has disappeared. He was abducted today as he drove along the notorious road from the airport back into the city. The kidnappers are believed to be members of Hezbollah, the group that holds six other American hostages. We consider these murders, hijackings, and abductions an attack on all Western civilization by uncivilized barbarians. In a place where the tradition of kidnapping goes back to the Crusades, yesterday saw another take place. A Belfast man, lecturer at the American University here, disappeared without trace. So far, no group has claimed responsibility. Only one thing seems clear. Only one thing seems clear. Forgot his bloody name. Keenan. Brian oh, Keenan. Keenan. Brian Keenan. Keenan. Only one thing seems clear. It looks as if Brian Keenan was mistaken for an American. Kidnapping is an inexpensive way for Muslims to tweak the tale of America, the great Satan. John McCarthy, Worldwide Hello. Television News, Beirut. Hello. Hello, Jill Morrell. Hi. Hi. Oh, don't tell me there's been a hitch. Everything's fine. Great, the holiday tickets have arrived. It was 80 in Crete yesterday. It's cold as that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When's your plane get in? Tomorrow, it's due in at 12.45. I'll be there. And I shall be wearing a copy of The Times. It's been a long four weeks. Take care, John. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye. I love you. I love you. Bye. Ronald Reagan's answer to the explosion in Berlin ten days ago, which left two American servicemen dead, began here on Britain's airfields. The president's response to Gaddafi's campaign of terror was supported by Mrs. Thatcher, who approved the use of British air bases for the American operation. The Libyans were quick to show us the deadly effects of the raid. The children injured here were sleeping in their beds when the bombs fell. The reaction on the streets has been swift and defiant, with calls for revenge, not only on President Reagan, but on the countries that supported him.
It's been a mistake. I'm, I'm not married. Listen. So I, I'm not anybody important. I, actually, I've only been here for weeks. Hello. Oh, hi. You're joking. Yeah, on his way to the airport. Look. Uh, Come into work now, Joe, and, and bring a good photo of him. Who's in charge? I want to speak to the man in charge. Khamsin Elf Dollar. La 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 la, isma. Kul ittifa malghi. La, n'qdash n'amal hik. Ah, hik ahsan. People expecting me in London. Uh, can I make a phone call? Oh, right. Well, perhaps you can uh, make a phone call on my behalf then. They say that there are problems that I've, I've been delayed. Does anyone here speak English? Is, is this really necessary? Look, there really is no need for all this. How long exactly do you intend to help me? Oh, bloody hell! Oh! For Christ's sake, gentlemen! Gentlemen! Is there someone there? Who are you? Would you like to talk? Oh. Don't talk. People hear English, you die. Don't talk. Turns out this kidnapped in the Lebanon has been murdered. An anonymous caller has told a radio station in Beirut that a kidnapped Briton has been executed because of Britain's role in the American attack on Libya. The caller claimed to be a member of the Islamic Liberation Organization and said the man's body could be collected from a sports stadium, but a search revealed nothing. Dick, excuse me, I, I need to go to the toilet. Uh, toilet. Toilet, please. Toilet. This is ridiculous. 
ridiculous. It's completely and utterly ridiculous. Oh, I hate you. Jesus, I hate you. I hate you. Help me! Help! I hate these bloody cockroaches! Please! I... I, I need... I need a candle. I, I, I need some light! I, please help me! Ayatollah Khomeini today launched another fierce attack on America, calling President Reagan a barbarian and a terrorist. He claims that Shiite Muslims would rather die killing their enemies than surrender to them. And that's just what the followers of Khomeini in Beirut are demonstrating here today. This bizarre ritual of self-mutilation, so strange to Western eyes, is one way these men have of showing they are as willing to die for their God as to kill for him. For three months, we've heard nothing. The most likely thing is he's being held by a faction backed by Iran. Hezbollah's the front runner, according to our latest information. Who are they? The Party of God, founded in Lebanon six years ago by Ali Akbar Mohteshemi, is as fundamentalist as you can get, and is now Iran's interior minister. The last three British hostages have been killed. If my son is still alive, how can we stop them from murdering him? It may seem a small consolation, but alive he is worth more. A dead hostage has no value. Can we pay to get him out? No. There's only one policy we can follow. It's absolutely clear. There can be no reward for releasing John and no negotiations. We can't be seen to bargain. If we do that, it'll lead to many more kidnaps. And you know the kind of pain that involves. Fuck me, Ben Gunn. What? Uh... No, nothing, not, not really. No, come on, what do you mean, Ben Gunn? Um... Well, he, he was his character in Treasure Island, you know. Yeah, I know his character in Treasure Island. What do you mean by that? Well, he was all hair, out, out to here. You're Irish. I spent my whole life trying to get away from the fucking Brits that put me in with one. Sorry. After three months on my own by myself, like, I've forgotten how to talk. You, Brian Keenan. Last thing I ever did was a piece on you. Biggest bloody mistake of my life. I refuse to submit to being chained. You'll not have my cooperation. Why, what's the point? You're going to get hurt. 
Go down. Uh, in Ireland, we don't even chain our animals. Dad, I've got yeah. fractures this morning when you won't listen to me. I'll, I'll come on, you fool. I'll beat no, you to a pulp. Nobody's going to put me in Ireland. I'm from East Belfast. I'll not submit to the right, indignity. You're being incredibly stupid. No, I'm not going to cooperate. Go down. Well, he doesn't mean that. He, he's suffering I'm from not sunstroke. Submit. I'm not I mean, like you sunstroke. bastards every inch of the way. I do a hundred bucks. Run, please. You're not going to do this every day. You will never have my cooperation. No. Oh! Oh! But that's not fair! Oh! It's me that's making the protest! Oh, oh, all right, all right! Oh. Go down. Go! Oh. Oh. Why did your brother go out there in the first place? To get away from Belfast. I saw you on the TV. You are doing a grand job. Thanks, love. Signed a petition for the Belfast hostage. Diplomacy is a number of working rules established for mutual convenience between states. Come down to our level. English, Connor, not gibberish. We must at all times stress that your brother is Irish, not British. Stress Irish. Why do you think we're sitting here and not in the British Foreign Office? It was the British told us to come here. They said they could do nothing for him. What are you doing to get Brian out? We're doing everything that can be done. Everything which is in our power to do is being done. No. Wait. If someone asks me today, Elaine, what are you doing to get Brian out? I can say, I've written a letter to see if we can visit Iran. Now, that's the kind of thing we understand, you see, going to talk to someone. Everything which is in our power to do, that's shite. It means nothing. Bluntness and aggression are very crude weapons when you're dealing with another culture. Islam has certain ways of doing things. It's not Islam's the problem. It's you. Yous. We can't understand you. <laughs> Stalling. That's all yous are good for. It's a waste of two train fares coming down here. Don't you dare take that poster down, Connor. People don't know about John. They don't even know who he is. And we must make the public aware. And, and we're going to start a campaign to do just that. Friends of John McCarthy. If John is still alive, publicity will only hurt his chances of release. There was an item on the news last week that mentioned all the hostages except John. We ask every go-between to try and prove that John's alive. They've all failed. It wouldn't be fair to deceive you about the facts. That John's dead or that you're doing nothing. summary of the news. In Beirut, another American has been kidnapped. Frank Reed, 54, principal of a school in the Lebanese capital, has been abducted on his way to a game of golf. No group has claimed responsibility. This brings to 14 the number of Western hostages held in Lebanon. What time do you suppose it is? 
No idea. You know, Ireland's two hours behind this place. You mean to say the people of Ireland have yet to spend the two hours we've just spent? Bloody yeah. hell, no wonder they're murdering each other. You know, I went on hunger strike to prove it was Irish. Guards were shit scared to go all the way. Bobby Sands, Bobby Sands. You know, if we die, they've had it. Let's die then. Get them killed. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be good. Brian? Huh? Yeah. I'll be good. Thank you better be. No surrender! American hostage David Jacobson is finally home. After nearly 18 months in captivity in Beirut, Jacobson emerged from his nightmare to a long-awaited reunion with his family. He now joins former U.S. hostages Benjamin Weir and Father Martin Jenko in freedom. But he leaves behind six other Americans, including three taken hostage in the past two months. Was this the price for the release of the American hostages? A growing number of reports claim that each time a hostage was freed, Iran received a delivery of missiles and spare parts. President Reagan did not want to talk about the allegation. No comment, but could I suggest an appeal to all of you with regard to this, that the speculation, the comment at all, on a story that came out of the Middle East and that once has no foundation, that all of that is making it more difficult for us in our effort to get the other options free. Speaker Tip O'Neill took another view. You can't deal with terrorists, and we dealt with, in dealing with Iran, we dealt with terrorists. I think it was the, one of the worst things in foreign policy that I've seen in my years on the Hill. What's the excitement today, John Boy? John. Oh, Jesus, John. Oh, no. He'll be back. They'll not kill him. Just a few questions. I'll be back in a minute. Did you get me a candle? I said I needed a candle. the dark. It's better to light a candle than sit and curse the dark. It's better to light a candle than sit and curse the dark. It's better to light the candle than sit and curse the dark. It's better to light a candle and sit and curse the dark. <laughs> Da 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 da
Sakır televizyonu. Sana? Sana. Welcome to the House of Fun. McCarthy? I thought you were dead. Hvad? Jeg er kongen af Danmark, og jeg kan lide Jobbe. Hej, very good. I am the king of Denmark, and I like strawberries. Det <laughs> might come in useful someday. What is it? Jeg er, jeg er kongen. Jeg er kongen af Danmark. Af Danmark. Og jeg kan lide. Og jeg kan lide Jobbe. Your bear. Your bear. Your bear. Your bear. Your bear. Who's bear? Your bear. My bear. <laughs> to the kidnappers, I would say, please let us know that John's okay, and and please tell us why you're you hel are holding him. And what it is you want. We're desperate for news. That's it, really. I'm sorry, can I do it again? Okay. Uh. It's been over a year of waiting for news and things are getting really desperate now. To the kidnappers, I would say, please let us know that John's okay. What is it? The Syrians rolled into Beirut today with an impressive show of strength and the intention to end once and for all the anarchy that has flourished in the power vacuum here. Syria says the warring factions, freelance militias and terrorist groups in Muslim West Beirut are going to face a stark choice, submit to Syrian control or get out. Allez, allez, allez 
لازم يفوت دير بالك تمام احمر Okay. Where's John? Doesn't anyone ever kidnap any women around here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry Anderson, Associated Press. Tom Sutherland, American University in Beirut. I trust my luck to be in with the boss. Brian Keenan, English Department, AUB. An Irishman in Lebanon teaching English? Now, don't you start. Oh, that's Frank Reed. He's a principal of the International School of Beirut. How you doing? I wonder why they moved us. Well, Syria's taking over Beirut. Hezbollah moved you up here to keep you safe. How do you know? Video. Where'd you get that? I asked for it. You just gotta ask. It may take a couple of years, but... Why didn't you allow it to shave? Sometimes. You guys play poker? Yeah. Great. There's no fun playing with two. But doesn't your man play? He's been beaten more than the rest of us. I worked on it for three days solid. The only reason I'm addressing you today is because I got a brother who's been held hostage in Beirut for three years. Terry Anderson is a journalist, like all of you. And if he knew his big sister was talking to the cream of American journalism, I guess he'd kind of cringe in case I say the wrong thing. <clears throat> You're the people 
Terry put his behind on the line for. And while you're getting on with your day, Terry is desperately trying to hang on to his sanity. Yet the buck stops here, right here in this room. You're the smart guys. You know who to go to to make Terry Anderson an issue. How long are you going to let him suffer? Eventually, eventually Terry is going to come out and he's going to ask, what did you do for me? I know what I'm going to tell him. I did everything I could think of doing. What's your answer going to be? Let's go, come on. Bert, John. I'm going to wait on the man who didn't buy any cards. Brian, right, all right. I have nothing. Tom. I'll bet uh, two, no, four almost new Volvo tires. The Volvo's 27 years old. The tires are new. It's too rich for my blood. I can't handle it. I can't live with this kind of money. See you. Where you go? Straight to the tent. Straight, Jack. Built straight? Yes. Come on. Oh, shit. What's the specific gravity of milk? The specific gravity of milk, I'm trying to remember. Tom? If water is one, then milk has to be less. Wrong. Milk is more. Wait a minute, I got it. It's um, 1.032, that's it. Frank, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I spent a year and a half in Maine as a damn milk technologist, for Christ's sake. I think I should know. Milk is denser than water. I'm not talking about density. I'm talking specific gravity here. It's the same thing. It's not the same thing. You're both dense, if you ask me. He's right, Frank. Tom's right. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, listen to the science expert of Associated Press. Oh, thank you, Brian. I know specific gravity. I make the best Irish coffees in Beirut. I float cream onto coffee. Yeah, well, that's because you dissolve sugar in it, Dr. Einstein. You're just showing your ignorance. <laughs> My ignorance? Milk has fats which float. But milk has lactose and several other elements. Come on, no, he's shut up. He's, he's full of shit. He's just full of shit. For Christ's sake, lads. Yeah, well, do you want to bet $10,000 on it? Huh? On the specific gravity of milk? Ignore him. Well, yeah, I'll set up an experiment right here. $10,000. Does anybody want to bet? No? Because you're scared. You're scared Frank Reed is right. Deal the cards. <laughs> Whose deal is yeah, it? Whose deal, deal is the cards. it? Mm. Stimulating chained up at a group of intellectual giants. <laughs> Men of science. Shut up, Frank. <laughs> Take off. Take off, off. Up, come. Come, come. You go home. Good. What? You go home, huh? Maybe he's making a video. Maybe his luck's in and they're going to shoot him. No good. No go home. Okay, up, up. Go.
Be all right, old boy. You get used to it, Brian. I was born and reared in Scotland, within sight of the Firth of Forth. God, I love the way you say that. <laughs> At Skin Flats. Mm. Skin Flats, there's a name. Down the road from a place called Earth. <laughs> we used to ride our bicycles down there, hoping to get some girls. Oh, yeah, and did you? No. We were so naive. Sex is one thing. Love takes a little bit longer. I met Jean in Colorado. Our girls look remarkably like her. The way she was then. And back in Scotland, Soccer took up most of my time. I was good, too. Uh, I got a trial with the Glasgow Rangers. Who? Glasgow Rangers. Glasgow Rangers? Right. Never heard of Glasgow Celtic Camp in that time. Why don't you just go to hell? Is that soccer you're talking about? Yeah. If someone spent an afternoon showing me the basic fundamentals I would have been the best damn soccer player in this room Mr. Uh, yes, can I be first? I'm sick, I've got the shits Fickle, Ali, fickle Mahmoud. Yes, Mahmoud, yes. You're Lebanese, right? Yes, near Sidon. So why do you follow Iran? Because they are ruling themselves by Islam. What happened in Iran should happen everywhere. Islam. Every time you say Islam, you must get angry, huh? You blow up marines, you hijack planes, you kill passengers. And who did Hiroshima? Who did Vietnam? Who destroyed Lebanon in 1982? Who murdered hundreds of women and children in Sabra and Shatila? Who? To us, Islam only means violence. It's what you know, violence. You are wrong. All of you are wrong. America and Israel is leading terrorism all over the world, not Islam. Come, come. Uh, Mahmoud, uh, um, see, the thing is, um, I'm sick. Um, I'm, I'm going to need to go often today, possibly for the next couple of weeks. So I, I have diarrhea, the runs. Yeah? You must be locked. Oh, come on. No, it's all right, Brian. Look, that is a steel door. I can't go anywhere. You must I'm... be locked. The Iran affair is now a scandal. The president's national security advisor, John Poindexter, resigned last night. And Colonel Oliver North, a senior official on the National Security Council, has been fired. Colonel, would you stand up, please, and let me administer oath. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. As the testimony has unfolded over the past few months, the crucial unanswered question is, how much did the president know? A few months ago, I told the American people I did not trade arms for hostages. My heart and my best intentions still tell me that's true. But the facts and the evidence tell me it is not. What began as a strategic opening to Iran deteriorated in its implementation 
into trading arms for hostages. There are reasons why it happened, but no excuses. Mike Mulholland. Am I in the State Department? Yes, ma'am. I can't be. I don't know anybody. Where's John Erickson? I'm his replacement. I don't know any of you guys. Well, there have been a lot of uh, changes, uh, a lot of promotions. Promotions. I spent a long time building up trust with some good people, and then everybody disappears. Well, this is Mike Plaskett and uh, Bob Ball. So what did you do wrong to get put on the Middle East desk? Um, I should also tell you that uh, along with the changes uh, in personnel, there's also been a shift in policy. The hostages are to be devalued. What's that supposed to mean? We must convince the kidnappers that hostages have no value. If an American plane got hijacked tonight, the State Department would find a way to get everybody home. Just like the TWA incident, the government did what they said they'd never do, negotiate with terrorists. When the Achille Lauro passengers got off, we all heard, oh, we really mean it this time. We don't negotiate with terrorists. And then there was arms for hostages. What about Terry? As of today, when it comes to hostages, the U.S. government is no longer a player. Can you really expect Hezbollah to believe that, given your track record? The U.S. government can't be held to ransom if it doesn't value whatever's been taken. You can't do this. You really can't. Mrs. Say? Mrs. Say? I've followed what you've been doing for a long time, and I'd like you to know that I am on your side. As opposed to him? Did he send you after me? No, ma'am. Well, I'm going out right now and talk to any journalist who wants to listen about the latest thing in devaluation. No. Unless you'd care to do it. Um, I... Mahmoud? Yes. When are you going to let us go? As soon as the 17 hostages in Kuwait jails are free. No, it's not the same thing, Mahmoud. You know it's not the same thing. They blew up innocent people. They destroyed the U.S. and French embassies in Kuwait. We're journalists, teachers. We haven't done anything wrong. I told you, when they are free, you are free. I want to be free as well. Then I can go home. I'm a prisoner like you. You are the same. Great, let's swap. You give me the gun, and I'll lock you in these chains. You have a sister, Peggy? Peggy? Yeah, Peggy, how do you know Peggy? On TV. Peggy on TV? What did she say? We're going to make her an honorary member of Hezbollah. Yeah, what did she say? Mahmoud, how'd she look? She understands us. She's good for us. She's on TV more than Coca-Cola. <laughs> How'd she look? Huh? What else did she say? Mahmoud? Maybe she understands. Hostage taking is the poor man's oil. Ali! Ali! My first wife was Japanese. Miyoko. Mickey. We have a daughter. They're both back in Japan now with Mickey's parents. What's the child's name? Gabrielle. Last time I saw her, she was nine. Children trust you so much. When I get out of here, I'm going to bring her over to the States for a visit. She's 13 now. She's gawky, probably. If I'd known how all this was going to turn out, I would have done so much more, you know. I mean, sometimes I ignored her. You know, just reading the newspaper or something. She'd be talking to me and I'd be saying, mm-hmm. 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 I... Uh, another moment lost. Oh, yes. 
see her again. I'm <laughs> sure, Terry. <laughs> I didn't know it could hurt this much. My fiance, Madeline. Oh, I love her. She was pregnant when the bastards took me. I have a child whom I've never seen. <laughs> I've never held. Easy, Terry. Easy, easy, man. Easy. Come. Structure is one of the most breathtakingly simple things in nature. The double helix. The stuff of life. DNA reproduces itself exactly. Come on, Terry, that's enough. Two chains of alternate sugar and phosphate groups twisted. For God's sake, Terry, you're going to bash your brains out. Come on, Terry. You end up worse than old Frank there. Each human cell contains 46 chromosomes made up of this DNA material. Except, and this is beautiful, the sperm and the egg, they contain half that number, 23. And when fertilization takes place, one human cell of 46 is formed, which divides and divides again and again, again and again. Terry, for God's sake... Terry! Stop! Go, stop! I will not stop until you allow me to contact my family for Christmas. Come on! I will not stop until you allow me to contact my family for Christmas. What do you want? What is wrong? I will not stop until you allow me to contact my family for Christmas. I will not stop until you allow me to contact my family for Christmas. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come Shut up. Talk, 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 talk. To my family, my friends, my countrymen, and my government. To my family. I think of you all and each of you every day. Kiss my beautiful children for me and be patient. Hey, Terry, you look too good. To That's bad friends, for our cause. I know your prayers and messages of goodwill, your efforts for us. To my government, I don't know what to say. I know you are trying to get us out. I don't know exactly what it is you can do. I only know it hasn't been enough or the right thing. This is my third Christmas as a hostage. Surely by now, you know what must be done and how you can do it. Mr. President, we in the United States are not absolutely innocent here. Our hands are not completely clean. It is time to do something. Mr. President, 
when the holidays and the New Year parties are over, you will go back to work. Remember, we are still here in our prisons, and we will remain here until you find a solution. Merry Christmas. You know what? You know what the State Department will say? They'll say he was forced to read that. I don't think that was Harry speaking. I think that was... I think he had a script that was given to him. When I was given a script, I always read the lines. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Frankie. Happy Christmas. So who's for a game of hide and seek? What? In here? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride What the hell's going on? Why don't we get something to eat around here? I wonder what time it is. 1988? Certainly daylight. Ah, that's it, daylight. Got it in one, Brian. It's Ramadan again. It happens to us every year. No food in daylight hours. Not to us, it hasn't happened. I am not a Muslim! Cut it out, Brian. You'll get us all beaten. The only thing I am this minute is hungry. Anybody got a cigarette? Surely you're allowed to smoke during daylight, huh? Infidels! Right. Shh. <laughs> Good idea, Brian. <coughs> yeah. Mm. Inside a heave of relief. Me. Ali? Yes. You married? Yes. Do you have any children? This week. Boy. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Sukran. Eat, huh? Hey, listen, I'll make you a deal. You know, I figure I've got about four years back pay coming to me. You let me out, I'll mail you a fortune. We will get more than that for you. We will get our friends from the Kuwait jail. Are you in a terrorist union? God, I hate that word, terrorist. The Associated Press, I tried to ban the use of it. Sorry, sir. Freedom fighters, sir. That word. It's been used by everybody over and over to justify any aggression. You know, Terry, you're terribly serious. Words are so important. It's all propaganda used to persuade one set of people that another set of people aren't really human. So then you can do anything you like. You torture them, you kill them, anything. But it teaches us to think of fellow humans in terms of unsuitable words. Nigger. Yid. Raghead. Terrorist. Paddy. You call me a fucking Brit? Okay, ready to roll. Okay, nobody cheats, okay? What's this? Vermont Avenue. Yeah. What, what, that the angel this is the original Atlantic City board. North Carolina Avenue. Yeah. Well, for God's sake, Terry, what have you done? That's Oxford Street. Don't give me that. Monopoly was invented by a guy from Philadelphia in the 30s. Come on, come on. It's a capitalist game for capitalist countries. Yeah, it's on, I don't believe it. Come on, let's get on with it. The United States ship Vincent. 
shot down an Iranian passenger airliner in the Persian Gulf. Over 300 people on board are believed to have been killed. Jeez. Ayatollah Khomeini has issued a statement strongly condemning the attack, which he called an international outrage, and which he vowed would be revenged. President Reagan said it was a tragic accident. He added that the captain of the Vincennes believed he was about to be attacked after the aeroplane had refused requests to identify itself. In Britain, the Prime Minister, Mrs. Margaret Thatcher, refused to condemn. The effect of the incident has been further to sour relations between the West and the Muslim world. Any tentative moves to restore relations between Tehran and London or Washington have now been abandoned. <laughs> Brian, don't. He's trying to take a fucking radio. Give him the fucking radio. 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 Okay, old boy. I'm the king of Denmark, and I hate strawberries. Anybody else? Terry? Tom? I don't know where they are. Frank? Maybe they've been released. No way. Probably dead. Cheerful, Charlie. How the hell do you survive, Frank? The way I always survive, I will not let them see that they're hurting me. Surviving is passive. You lie there and do nothing. Well, it seemed to work quite well for Mr. Gandhi. He brought uh, merry old England to her knees with passive resistance. Besides, I tried the other way. If you'll remember, I'm the only one in the whole bunch who tried to escape. Yeah, so you keep telling us. Were you on your own at the time? Uh, what are you inferring? Nothing, no. I just wondered if it was easier when you were by yourself. <laughs> oh. You know... You're supposed to touch your chest to the floor each and every time and relax before you push back up. I'll show you how to do 50 someday.
Take this. Mm. Why do you still make us wear the blindfolds? It is hard to punish a man who looks at you. you know, some of you enjoy hurting. Some don't. You and I are the same. I told you. Same people. Take. You know, this is the tenth time you've told me I'm going home. Ten. It's another joke, right? It is never a joke. Today is good. I sure. Take. No, you see, a criminal knows why he's in, and he knows when he's going to get out. We don't. And that's the worst for me. It's worse than the humiliation. It's worse than the beatings. What about you? Sorry. No go home. No. I'll do it. I know that smell. I couldn't bear to leave you. Could we get a video in here again sometime, please? Like tomorrow? Huh? A video, please? Anything more? Taxi? Yeah, I know, look. We're not to shake hands. No. And there's something about not pointing your feet at him. Or maybe pointing your feet at him. Brenda, he's from another country, not another planet. شما باید در نظر بگیرید که دولت ما هیچ گونه نفوذی روی افرادی که برادر شما را نگه داشتن نداره. The ambassador says you must realize that his government has no power over the people who are holding your brother. ما حتی نمیدونیم اینها کی هستند. He doesn't even know who's holding him. مثل اینه که دولت ایرلند مسئول اعمال آیاره واقع بشه. It is as if we were to hold the Irish government responsible for the actions of the IRA. در ضمن مسئله برادران مسلمان شیعه هست که در جنوب لبنان گروگان اسرائیل هستند. There is also the Shia Muslim hostages held in southern Lebanon by the Israelis. آمریکا باید فشار بیاره که اینها آزاد بشن. America must pressurize Israel to release them. Blaming America for Israeli actions is like holding the Irish government responsible for the actions of the IRA. And who pays Israel's bills, provides its weapons? Without America, Israel would not exist. But the ambassador says he cannot hold the two sisters from Belfast responsible for the troubles of the world. من هر کاری که از دستم بر بیاد انجام می دهم که انشالله برادرشون هر چیز زودتر آزاد بشه. The ambassador will do everything in his power to hasten your brother's release. Kahve. The ambassador wants to know if you would like some more coffee. The funeral of Ayatollah Khomeini today in Tehran was the occasion for an extraordinary outburst of fervor. Troops lost control as thousands of mourners tried to touch the corpse. Asked about the future of U.S.-Iranian relations, President Bush was cautious. society of that nature it's hard to predict I would simply repeat what I said on January 20th that uh, there's a way for a relationship with the United States to improve and that is for a, uh, a release of the American uh, hostages with Khomeini's death Western governments hope that this man takes over Hashemi Rafsanjani is what counts as moderate in Iran Unlike the late Ayatollah, he says he is willing to talk about improving relations with the West in general and the United States in particular. Thank you. go home. Gee, thanks. Come. See you later. Don't wait up for me. Action force. I think Aristotle here would prefer something a little more taxing. Mm. Not news, huh? Mm. Not news. 
Please, sir, can we take our blindfolds off to watch it? I am very angry that Tom and Terry are not free. And I am very angry that John and Brian are not free. For God's sake, it's been nearly six years for some of these men. And I'm actually embarrassed to be out before they are. Because of the tireless work and total dedication of Gene Sutherland, Peggy Say, Jill Morrell, and the Keenan sisters, Brenda and Elaine, I am here today, unchained and unblindfolded. The whole world must realize that what these men and women represent is something that transcends all geopolitical ideas and motives. <clears throat> something that has unfortunately been the currency of kidnappers for centuries, and that is freedom and life. And finally, let the people of Ireland and England never forget Brian and John, because for God's sake, they are you and you are they. Everything is connected. Frank was a free gift. We were as surprised about it as everybody else. No, I swear, there was no deal. Then why did they let him out? because we're winning. The policy of no negotiation is working. There'll be others, wait and see. Peggy, we ran some tests on Frank. He had 12 times the safe limit of arsenic in his body. That's poison. It's also a crude kind of tranquilizer. I thought you should know. See what's on the box. Don't be mad, they'll hear us. We'll turn the sand up. No, we'll get thumped. Don't be such a coward. It's me! Brian, for Christ's sake, turn it up. They'll kill us. It's only music. It's been... Jill. Years. Jill, it's Jill. Jesus, listen. Alas, oh, John. And what would you say to him if you could? I can't bear it without you, and... I can't bear not having you here to talk to and to make me laugh and... laugh and just be yourself and... Remind everybody that life is special and that it can be fantastic when the person that you love is around. And that we're all thinking about you and wish you'd come back soon. I've just seen Jill. Can you believe that, Brian? Christ. I don't believe it. our best efforts to plead with these groups and they released the American prisoner Frank Reed. Goodwill will beget goodwill, the Americans said. There has been no response. There are hundreds of Shia Muslims still held by Israel in southern Lebanon. Hezbollah say to us they have been betrayed. Do they have to show more goodwill before there is a response from Israel from the West? Brian Keenan is Irish, not British or American. We cannot discuss individuals. 
But you agree there is an Irish hostage? Yes. Ireland is a neutral country. Indeed, we have suffered a great deal at the hands of British imperialism. Ireland has little or no power, and even less money. But you have the presidency of the European community at this time. We would like to upgrade diplomatic relations between ourselves and the European community. We will use our best offices to influence others. Those who hold hostages do not obey us. We are faced with a humanitarian problem. It is impossible to predict anything in this world, but I think the Irish hostage deserves to be released soon. Someday, maybe, someday, this experience might be valuable. Brian, there is not one valuable second in any of this. These are lost years, totally lost. You know, one of the most useless things in the world is to be standing in a queue, and we've been in a queue now for four bloody years. But not many people have been to the edge of the plank, like us. We see things differently. You know, when I was on my own, I hated it, but I found it fascinating. <laughs> Sometimes I think I was totally insane. I was watching my own mind opening like a deranged flower. A flower derangement? Cut it out. Today is good for you, Brian. You're going home. Yeah, sure. Yes. Bye. Come on, Brian. This is the 14th time I'm out. Brian, Brian, Brian. Believe me, today is true. Come on. Come on, you're going home. Come on.
My wonderful sisters, Elaine and Brenda. I feel torn between a rock and a hard place. I am overwhelmed at the affection. But a part of me wants to go back to those men that are left behind. the neighborhood what kept you god it's good to see you fellas good to see you john good to see you welcome did you ever get the feeling that everyone else has finished the book and you're only on chapter three i can't be doing the right thing or terry would be out Terry's aware of what you've been doing. And he loves it. You know, the guards told him once that they were going to make you an honorary member of Hezbollah. Have I prolonged his captivity? Does publicity make them hold on to him longer? Has everything I've done for the past five years been an awful mistake? Hell no, your campaign helped him to keep going. Listen, Peggy, in captivity, you learn to live with what is, not what you want it to be. Is Terry mad at our government? Who's he mad at? Nobody. He's just not angry anymore. Peggy, there's nothing more you can do. I've been doing this for five and a half years now. I don't know how to quit. Why don't we suggest the consumptive joins us? He'll never go for it. What if he's a terrible bore? Brian was convinced it's Terry Waite. <coughs> Poor bugger. You know what it's like on your own. Go. Go, go, go. One hour. You go back. How are you doing, old man? It's all right. Don't feel you need to say anything. No, it's okay. Just sit down. <gasps> Have you been alone all this time? The plan is to bring you in for longer and longer periods. To get used to us. Well, we're getting used to bastards like us will take some doing, I can tell you. Europe and Asia, Africa and the Arab League, 
have forces in the Gulf area standing shoulder to shoulder against Saddam Hussein. These countries had hoped the use of force could be avoided. Regrettably, we now believe that only force will make him leave. In the past few days, we have seen the extent of American military might. The impact point is steady. Good by sneezing on the turn. Stand by for designate. Our strategy to go after this army is very, very simple. First, we're going to cut it off, and then we're going to kill it. The common goal of evicting Saddam Hussein from Kuwait has also produced an unlikely alliance with Syria and even Iran, America's longtime enemies, supporting U.S. policy in the Gulf. Whatever the stated reason for this sudden shift in military and diplomatic relations, the collapse of the Soviet Union now means America is the only source of the arms and technology these countries want. Yeg er calling a Denmark, or Yeg can lead your bear. Your bear. Again. No. I'm too depressed. Now why on earth would you be depressed? It's summer. The cricket season. John? Greetings. <laughs> 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 Allah is merciful. Mahmoud. And today there is good news for you, John. You're going home. Mahmoud. Hello. Hello. Naam. We are sending this letter to the Secretary General of the United Nations by the hand of a special emissary. We have chosen John McCarthy from amongst the persons we are detaining. The need is for action to secure the release of our freedom fighters from prisons in occupied Palestine and Europe. We call for a comprehensive solution to secure the release of all detainees around the world. In such an eventuality, we would be willing to complete the process that we began today and release the persons we are detaining within 24 hours. Hello? Jill? Hi. It's free. I don't believe it. Oh my God. Oh my God! Brian! Brian! John, it's free. Did you hear that? Just on the news. Just now? Yeah. You could possibly just about hear it because the plane has landed and it's gone round to the back, way behind the bushes, away from us here. You can just about hear the sound behind me now. And as I said, it's going to taxi round, come round to a point where it can be picked up by our cameras, and we will then await breathlessly for John McCarthy stepping back on British soil. But now. It's within feet of its appointed stopping place now. Well, already the doors are open so that John McCarthy and party can descend. Welcome to the circus, John boy. Five years late, and it's the wrong airport. <laughs> Hostage is a crucifying aloneness. There is a silent, screaming slide into the bowels of 
ultimate despair. Hostage is a humiliating stripping away of every sense and fiber of body and mind and spirit that make us what we are. Hostage is a mutant creation filled with fear, self-loathing, guilt, and death wishing. But he is a man, a rare, unique, and beautiful creation. And in that quarter life existence, with a mind's massive overload, pushing and straining for survival, these men know an awful smothering in the shadows. But because I know them as rich, vibrant, colorful human beings, I know they have also, as has been said by a better man than me, the courage to seek, to strive, to find, and not to yield. <laughs>